today. I'm Patrick Lawler from Investec Wealth and Investment. Today we welcome someone from our UK office, Andrew Shard, who heads up international equity research. One of the areas Andrew covers is the global uh, energy and oil sectors, and he's going to be talking a little bit about this and also a touch on the metal sector as well. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Andrew, over the last two years or so, going back to June 2014, we've seen one of the most severe uh, downward movements in the in the oil market. What were some of the, the, the factors behind all of that? The oil price weakness has really been driven by a combination of factors. Firstly, significant new oil supply from US shale, which many people refer to as fracking. Secondly, demand has softened as the global economic recovery stalled over the last couple of years. And finally, OPEC. We've had a significant change in OPEC policy. The key driver really has been US supply though. The US is now independent really for energy for the first time in a generation. They rely less on the Middle East and this has really driven OPEC into quite a tight spot. Historically OPEC would try and control supply to try and control the oil price uh, but they have decided now to push on and supply as much as they possibly can to force the price of oil down. They want to try and force out of the market the high cost producers wherever they are in the world and OPEC believes as the low cost producer they really will be the last man standing and be able to regain a lot of market share. Nonetheless Andrew we've seen a little bit of a rally lately and some positive remarks by the big oil producing countries and as well as from the International Energy Authority. Um, have we reached something of a turning point? I think we probably have. I think even though it's hard to predict in the short term the outlook for a volatile commodity such as oil, there are some really key fundamental changes going on within the sector. The good news is they're not driven by politics or by OPEC, but real response from the industry itself. The oil industry is self-correcting. and By that I mean a low oil price stimulates demand and that can help the price of oil. Also, a low oil price does mean that returns on investment available to producers are a lot lower and that leads to capital investment being reduced and eventually supply dries up. And that's what we're seeing at the moment. You know, the rig count, which is the number of rigs actively looking for oil, has collapsed. Companies' revenues have collapsed so they can spend less looking for oil. And importantly, in the last few weeks, we are seeing supply start to roll over. And I think that's what really is driving this stabilisation of oil prices. So far too early to say we're out of the woods, but the response from the industry gives you a lot of confidence that we are probably at a turning point now. And did you see much upside from here? Presumably some of those producers can come back on stream once the price starts to rise a bit, I mean, which could limit some of that upside. Where, where do you see things going from here? Yeah, I think absolutely we can see maybe some oil supply from US Shell come back over time. But as I said before, there's a huge industry response going on here to globally reduce the supply of oil. Many projects, hundreds of billions of dollars in fact, of projects have been cancelled. And a lot of those are multi-year in nature. And by that I mean, if they started today, it would be three, five, ten years before they came to light and been able to produce oil. So all of those have been cancelled. So I think that if we are going to get US shale oil come back, it'll be from the larger, better capitalised producers. What we're seeing at the moment is that small producers are struggling for finance, banks are not lending, high yield markets are shut, and in many ways, in many instances, they're going bankrupt in the last few months. So as the price of shale oil rises, uh, you will see more supply come online, but we think it will be in a more disciplined way, really from only the large, well-capitalised producers. Moving on from oil, I mean, maybe touch a little bit on the other commodity markets, maybe metals as well. Yeah, of course. The slump in metal prices to some extent has been very similar to the collapse in oil prices, namely it's been due to too much supply. That said though, I really think it's a much tougher outlook for metal prices going forward. Why? Well really because of the lack of discipline we see the metal producers displaying at the moment. If we contrast it to oil, as we've talked about, capital investment has been pulled back really hard. We're seeing companies focus on cost and profitability. In the metal sector, unfortunately, a lot of the very large producers are still pushing as much product as they can into the market. They're trying to protect their market share and for second and third tier players basically out of business. Now that will happen over time, but it is a much different approach to the energy sector. Additionally, metal and mining facilities are really very, very sensitive politically. These are huge employers. They generate huge amount of tax revenues for governments and counties. So quite rightly, they're a lot harder to close down. And given these are 20 to 30 year life projects, it's just not easy to take that supply out quickly. And again, if you contrast that to the oil sector, 
a US shale well can be started, drilled, completed and closed down within 30 days. So a much different dynamic, a much different pace of recovery. So metal prices will recover, it's just going to be a tougher, slower recovery. Presumably, Andrew, uh, Chinese demand is, 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 is the key behind all of this, isn't it? Certainly China's been a huge driver of the metals business over the last few years, but it is very hard to see that kind of demand come back in the foreseeable future. China had to rebuild its economy, they had to build an industrial economy. They have done that to a great extent, and the super cycle, as we call it, the huge demand for all kinds of industrial infrastructure is over. They're now moving towards building a consumer side of their economy, which is great in the long term for the balance of the Chinese economy, but it will not require as many of these natural resources as the industrial bill did. So to us, the recovery in the metal and the mining sector has got to come from the company's own discipline, the willingness to take hard decisions. Chinese demand may improve slowly over time as the economy recovers, but it's never going to be the same momentum driver of that sector. So we do hope and expect to see a recovery in metal prices over time, but it's just going to be a slow recovery than the one we expect in the energy sector. In summary then, reasons for cautious optimism in the energy sector, but maybe not so much optimism in the metal sector. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Pleasure.